morning, at least for me. Today, we are doing properties of exponents. So we're going to just understand what exponents do to different problems. You've seen a lot of this before. Nothing groundbreaking here. Definitely an Algebra 1 topic today. But if you've forgotten, we'll give you some reminders. And if you weren't great at it, hopefully you get better today. Let's see how we do. All right. So I talked about this a little bit in the last section. So this should be familiar. And if you weren't great at it in the last one, hopefully you get better at it today. If I've got 81 to the negative 3 force power. Okay. This is, again, this is the number one mistake my older students make. 81 to the negative 3 force. The negative puts it on bottom. If you have a negative in an exponent, it's going to do the reciprocal of it. So it's going to move it to the denominator. 3 force power is the same thing as the fourth root cubed. The fourth root of 81. What number multiplies together four times to get 81? It'd be 3. And we take 3 and we cube it. And we get 27. 1 over 27 because of the reciprocal. So that's what we're doing here. We're just rewriting these things and getting some more practice with this. 4 to the negative 3 halves. So that is going to be 1 over 4. That's my root. So it's a square root. And then I'm going to cube it because of the third power. I always do power, or roots first. So the square root of 4 is 2. And then 2 cubed would get me 1 eighth because that's 2 times 2 times 2. It's easy. 1 eighth. Let's try number 2. Negative 1 half. Uh, 25 to the negative 1 half power. So it's 1 over 25 because it's a negative power. One half, oh, that's a root. What kind of root? It's a square root because it's a two on bottom. One over 25, uh, or square root of 25, that would be the same thing as one fifth. Nine to the negative three halves. One over nine. It's a square root, so it's, it's a two, I'm sorry, it's a one half. So it's a square root. And then I am cubed. We do the root first, so the square root of 9 is 3, and then 3 cubed gets me 27. 64 to the negative 2 thirds, negative. It is a cube root this time, because it's a 3 on bottom, and then I'm squaring it. So I'm going to do the square root, for, or the cube root first. What number multiplies together 3 times to get me 64? The answer to that question is 4. 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 again is 64. So that's 1 over 4, and then I'm squaring it, and so that is the same thing as 1 over 16. That's it. Um, let's say, I'm, I didn't give you any of these, but let's say I did 1 fourth to the negative 1 half power. If I had 1 fourth to the negative 1 half, I would do the reciprocal of 1 fourth with the negative. So that would become just 4 to the one half power and then four to the one half power that is like the square root of four which would get me two not one that's on there but i just want you to see hey we did all these reciprocals we we put it on bottom we put it on put on bottom we put it on bottom but if it is on bottom then it's going to go on top it's just going to switch if it's in the numerator it goes to the denominator if it's in the denominator it goes in the numerator all right so with that being said let's simplify some radicals so this is not difficult but it always catches kids by surprise if I want to simplify the square root of 16, x to the 6th power, it is like we are doing these two things, all right? It is like doing them separately. It doesn't matter that they're together. Sometimes doing them together slows kids down, but visually this might make a little more sense to you. The square root of 16, oh, that is 4. And then we are taking the square root of x to the 6th. And so a lot of students think, like if I did the square root of x to the ninth. A lot of students would think that is x cubed. That is not x cubed. All right, that is not what this is. What the square root of x to the sixth is, is the same thing as x to the sixth divided by two. Because remember, it's a square root. That is the root, so it would go on bottom. Well, what is six divided by two? Six divided by two is three. And so really what you're doing here is you're going to divide by whatever your root is when you have an exponent. So since the root is 2, I'm taking 6 divided by 2. Understand why this is. It's x to the 6th, which means there's 6 of them. And then I'm taking the square root. So it means what things, when you multiply them together, would get you x to the 6th? x cubed times x cubed. When I take the square root, I'm left with just x cubed. 
Maybe that makes sense. Now that I write that out, I don't know if that really helps at all. It makes sense in my brain. If it doesn't make sense in yours, I apologize. <laughs> Maybe I just screwed you up. Let's do another one. Make it easy. Square root of 49, that's 7. The square root of x to the 12th, well, if I rewrote the square root of x to the 12th, that'd be x to the 12th divided by 2, because the root goes in the denominator of the exponent. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Done. 8x to the 15th, all cube rooted. The cube root of 8 is 2. And then I'm taking x to the 15th and rewriting that, x to the 15th, and then it's like divided by 3 because it's cube root. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Cube root of 27x to the 6th. The cube root of 27 is 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 9. What multiplied 3 times will get you x to the 6th? Uh, well, x to the 6th divided by 3. Oh, x squared would get me x to the 6th. Some properties of exponents things here. Remember that when you're multiplying two things that have the same base with the exponents, we add them together. 3 plus 5 equals 8. We just add the exponents. If we're dividing exponents, like x to the fifth divided by x cubed, we are going to subtract them. 5 minus 3 gets me x squared. And again, understand why this is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1, 2, 3. That's what this means, x to the fifth, fifth over x cubed. You cancel, you cancel, you cancel. What are you left with? x squared. Okay, same thing here. x cubed times x to the fifth means you have five x's being multiplied together. Well, how many x's do I have when I multiply them together? I've got eight. x third to x to the fifth. Remember with these two numbers, when you take an exponent and you raise it to another exponent, you're going to multiply them together. 3 times 5 is 15. Why is that? Because what this means is you have x cubed five times. It's x cubed multiplied together five times. Well, if I multiply this together five times, I've got 1, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. I'm multiplying those two numbers together. All right, so if we're multiplying, we add. If we're dividing, we subtract. If we're raising to a power, we multiply those numbers. So. 5 to the 1 third times 5 to the 5 thirds. I've got the same base. I'm multiplying exponents. Now I'm multiplying with two things with exponents. So what do I do with those two exponents? I am going to add them together. 1 third plus 5 thirds is 6 thirds. And 6 divided by 3 would be 2. We could leave that as 5 squared. We could go ahead and do 5 squared. That is 25. That is my answer. The answer to this question is 25. That looks kind of strange. If you don't believe me, let's do it real quick. So 5 to the, and I'm going to just write it as a fraction so you can see it. 5 to the 1 third times 5. Notice that this is not the fastest way to do this, but I'm just showing you that it works. 1 third times 5 thirds, oh yeah, I get 25. That's a real thing that I'm doing here. I'm not just make-believe. We added the exponents. Next one, we're multiplying again. So we've got to add the exponents. So we're really taking 1 seventh plus 2 thirds. But oh no, fifth grade math rears its ugly head. We need to add fractions. In order to add fractions, we need common denominators. What denominator do I want if I've got 1 seventh and 2 thirds? Let's go 21 as my denominator. What do I need to multiply this thing by on bottom to get 21? Well, I'd have to multiply by 3 on top and bottom. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 7 is 21. What do I need to multiply 2 thirds by? Well, 7 on top and bottom. 14 over 21. Now I can actually add 3 plus 14 would be 17 divided by 21. That is my new exponent. I had to get a common denominator, and then add them together. Next one, number nine. I'm taking x to the seven-eighths divided by x to the one-third. I'm dividing two bases with exponents. So if I'm doing that, what I really need to do is decide which one is bigger. Is seven-eighths bigger or one-third is bigger? Seven-eighths is definitely bigger. So that's, the x is going to end up on top. When I get this answer, it's just going to be x. 
with an exponent. I need to take 7 eighths minus 1 third. Well, I cannot just subtract those two because they do not have common denominators. What denominator do 8 and 3 both go into? There might be something else, but I'm going to use 24. To make 7 eighths become 24, I would need to multiply top and bottom by 3. So 21 over 24. To get 1 third to be 24, I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom by 8. 8 over 24. 21 minus 8. 13 over 24. That's my new exponent. So my answer is x to the 13 over 24. Common denominators. Next one, 3 to the 1 third divided by 3 to the 5 6. I'm trying to divide two things with the same base with different exponents. What do I need to do? I need to subtract. So you can do this a couple different ways. I'm going to do this thing. I'll just show it to you this way. 1 third minus 5 6. Well, I need common denominators. What denominator do I want? Well, we could get 6. I would multiply this top by 2 and this bottom by 2. So I get 2 6 minus 5 6. 2 6 minus 5 6 would be negative 3 6. And so what does that mean? Well, it's 3 to the negative 1 half power. That's my answer here, but we don't want to leave it like that. It's negative 1 half because the denominator is bigger. If the denominator is bigger, that is telling me that the 3 is going to end up in the denominator. When we divide and the bigger value is on bottom, you know that you're going to have that number in the uh, denominator instead of the numerator this time. So the negative is saying, oh yeah, put it on bottom. Last one. No, just kidding. I got a few more. All right. A to the 2 sevenths times negative 3. This is an easy one. If I'm raising to a power, all I need to do is multiply. So I'm taking 2 sevenths times negative 3. Remember, I'm multiplying fractions here. Um, you could say that's negative 3 over 1. Just makes it a little bit easier. So this is A to that power. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Remember, on bottom, we just multiply straight across. So 7 times 1 is 7. So my answer is A to the negative 6 sevenths power which is the same thing as 1 over a to the 6 sevenths. Since it had a negative exponent, it moved that base to the denominator. Number 12, I've got 1 fifth. Oh no, there's two things inside the parentheses. Well, I just multiply both exponents by 1 fifth. So it's x to the 7 over 1 times 1 fifth, and y to the 10 over 1 times 1 fifth. 7 times 1 and 1 times 5, oh, that is 7 fifths on my x. And my y, I'm taking 10 over 5, that gets me 2. I'm just multiplying in there. I'm writing a whole lot of stuff in there, but you can do it a little bit quicker than me, obviously. All right, now we're to the last set. Let's see what's happening. a to the 11th over b to the 6th times, or raised to the negative one third power. So there's lots of different things that we could do here. Here's what I'm going to do first. Since I have a negative exponent, I am going to flip my fraction. I'm going to rewrite this as b to the 6th and a to the 11th because a negative exponent does the reciprocal. It's going to flip that thing over, and now I'm going to raise that to the positive one third. The negative flipped it. Now I've got just a normal problem. All right, now I'm going to raise both of these exponents to the one third power. So Basically, all I need to do here is take 6 over 1 times 1 third and 11 over 1 times 1 third. So my final answer, B to the 6 over 3, otherwise known as 2. And on bottom, I've got A to the 11 thirds. One more. 14, h to the 1 fourth over g to the 7 halves raised to the third power. I'm going to distribute that 3. So I'm just taking 3 times 1 fourth, which would be 3 fourths. And 7 halves times 3 would be g to the 21 over 2. If you know what you're doing, it's just a matter of working it out there. We don't really need to subtract on this one. I say multiply, then subtract. I didn't have to subtract because the bases weren't the same. If the bases aren't the same, then I don't need to do that subtract part. If they had the same base, then we would have to do that.
Hope that makes sense to you. It's just properties of exponents. It's exactly what you learned back in Algebra 1 with just some 5th, 6th grade math of fractions built in. Hope that helps.